welcome back to read with me. It's been a couple of days since we last spoke. Have you been missing the story? Have you been wondering what comes next? resembled a groan, and 
then suddenly looking her full in the face with clenched teeth and expanded nostrils said, but if he is dead, if he is dead, I shall die too. If he has forgotten you, Mercedes, cried a voice joyously outside the house. Ah, exclaimed the girl, blushing with delight and springing up with love. You see, he has not forgotten me, for here he is. And rushing towards the door, she opened it, saying, Here, Edmund, here I am. Fernand, pale and trembling, receded like a traveler at the sight of a serpent and fell into a chair. Edmond and Mercedes were clasped in each other's arms. The burning sun, which penetrated by the open door, covered them with a flood of light. At first they saw nothing around them. Their intense happiness isolated them from all the rest of the world, and they only spoke in broken words, which are the tokens of a joy so extreme that they seem rather the expressions of sorrow. Suddenly Edmond saw the gloomy countenance of Fernand, as it was defined in the shadow, pale and threatening, and by a movement, for which he could scarcely account, the young Catalan placed his hand on the knife at his belt. Ah, your pardon, said Dantes, frowning in his turn. I did not perceive that there was company. Then turning to Mercedes, he inquired, Who is this gentleman? One who will be your best friend, Dantes, for he is my friend, my cousin, my brother. It is Fernand, the man whom, after you, Edmund, I love the best in the world. Do you not remember him? Yes, but I did not know when I came with such haste to you that I was to meet an enemy here. An enemy, cried Mercedes, with an angry look at her cousin. An enemy in my house, do you say, Edmund? If I believed that... I would place my arm under yours and go with you to Marseille, leaving my house to return to it no more. Fernand's eyes started lightning. And should any misfortune occur to you, dear Edmond, she continued, with the calmness which proved to Fernand that any girl had read the very innermost depths of his sinner, sinister intention. If misfortune should occur to you, I would ascend to the highest point of Cape Morgion and cast myself headlong from it. Fernand became a deadly pale. But you are deceived, Edmund, she continued. You have no enemy here. There is no one but Fernand, my brother, who will grasp your hand as a devoted friend. And at these words, the girl fixed her imperious look on the Catalan, who, as if fixated by it, came slowly towards Edmund and offered him his hand. His hatred, like a powerless, though furious wave, was broken by Mercedes' ascendancy. But to touch Dantes's hand was as much as he could constrain himself to do, and he instantly darted out of the house. He was still running when he was hailed from the tavern, where Danglars had halted with the tailor. The latter had already imbibed heavily, but the traitor was sober. He saw in the Catalan's eye that the fire of revenge and jealousy with which he might burn down his enemy's castle. While hatching a scheme, he asked the fugitive to sit down and carouse. They were so engaged with the happy couple of Dantes and his beloved strolled along. Mercedes was talking all the time. She could, as Edmond announced, that he had to go to Paris. Danglars guessed that his, this singular journey was linked to the letter he had seen confided to the acting captain, and as soon as the pair were gone, induced Fernand to write a denunciatory letter to the royal prosecutor, which would remove his rival, Cateraus, in his tipsy state was persuaded that it was only a practical joke. Hurrah, said the supercargo to himself. The thing is launched and will reach home without any more urging. That's the end of chapter three, friends. Be good, be kind, and I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.